welcome back okay the clip you just watched it was just uh, taking you through what an uh, optim optometrist does it's all about eye care and they say that uh, the face is like an uh, a piece of work and it requires uh, an, an artistic aspect of good frames when it comes to glasses and also that life is too short to wear boring glasses so today we are looking at the eye care industry and uh, it's all about uh, matters pertaining uh, looking at different op business opportunities in this sector which is the eye care industry in studio i am joined by none other than we the by none other than Cha Chatlon Ogingo, who is an optometrist and the co-founder of Smart Smarties Eyewear. I said it right, yeah? Smarties Eyewear. Yes. <laughs> but you missed the name. It's fine. <laughs> okay. This is the opportunity. Please <laughs> introduce yourself. Oh, thank you so much. Um, my name is Charlton mm -hmm. Ogingo. Mm -hmm. I am an optometrist. I am also passionate about eye health education, so I'm an eye health educator and also an entrepreneur in the eye care industry. All right. And like uh, you have rightfully put, I last year I decided to venture into that kind of a business. And uh, besides that, I work with the Nephromed mm -hmm. um, Specialty Care, uh, where I'm a resident optometrist there. And we, we work with a very enthusiastic team of doctors and nurses just to you know, give service to the people of Kenya. All right, so yeah. who is an, uh, an, an optometrist? Okay, that's a very fair question. Um, I, 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 a lot of people really um, confuse this, the, the, the people in the IK industry. So an optometrist is uh, a primary eye care provider who is uh, trained to, to, to test, to correct, uh, uh, to correct certain um, diseases of the eye and the visual system. They are licensed to prescribe eyeglasses and medication, uh, but they are not licensed to do surgery. Okay, then yes. who is the uh, ophthalmologist? No, ophthalmologist is uh, a medical doctor who specializes in vision care. So it's somebody who has gone to a medical school and then done a, a specialization in, in ophthalmology. And uh, they are trained to, to do surgery, to prescribe medication, and also to, to manage different eye uh, diseases of the eye. Okay, and finally, who is an opti opti optician? Well, an optician is a, is a technician who is trained uh, mostly in uh, lens technology. Okay. So they help uh, patients to choose the best lenses for the prescription that either an optometrist or an ophthalmologist writes. All right. Yeah. I think now you have a better understanding of all the three and what you guys do. Yeah. So what you deal with is when I come to you, <coughs> you'll, you know, do a good uh, a checkup. That's when I, the vision aspect of it, eye pressure and all that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do the examination mm -hmm. and then I will prescribe a management plan for you. Either it could be spectacle or medication or contact lens, depending on, on, on the problem that you have. All right, so Charlton, yeah. so take us to your uh, background. So who's Charlton? Why were you born and brought up? Okay, so um, I was born and brought up in, in Kisumu, um, a place called Nyakach. And um, I, I, when I was growing up, I, becoming an eye care practitioner was not one of my dreams. But I really thank my father who actually shaped me to, 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 to this career that I have right now. And uh, I have never met somebody who is more altruistic like him. And he's somebody who likes helping people, which is what um, optometry is all about. Um, so I, I, after finishing my um, O levels, I enrolled in, in um, Masinda Muliro University. At that time, that was the only university, it's actually still the only university that is offering optometry at a degree level. The other institution that we have is um, um, KMTC, which offers it at diploma level. So I undertook that training and then uh, began my practice in 2016, mm -hmm. towards the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And um, since that, it has been such a fulfilling uh, adventure. Um, I mean, usually the greatest pleasure that I get from it is probably not the money, but the fact that when you hear somebody that say to me that, you know, right now I can't be able to see, 
I mean, I can be able to go about my daily activities very well because their eyesight is now good. So it, it, it's, it's one of the greatest uh, pleasures that I derive from my profession. All right. And for the sake of our viewers uh, who are watching us today and they have an interest to get into the, uh, the eye care industry, so what is, what, who is eligible to actually uh, you know, be an, uh, an optometrist and what should they major on in school? Um, well, anybody who has a passion to help people mm -hmm. can be an optometrist uh, and I believe that is what um, uh, the health industry is all about. It's about giving back uh, because uh, trust me there is no amount of, of a salary can be able to match um, the kind of the, the fulfillment that comes when you realize that you have just changed somebody's life. You have just given him or her the gift of sight. So anybody who has that heart of, of helping can become an optometrist. Uh, when it, with regards to academics, um, sciences will be a good measure. Um, you'll have to measure in the, the sciences, especially life sciences, biology, and then also physics and, and chemistry. So when you're good at those ones, then you stand a higher chance of qualifying for, for, for admission into, into the university to do optometry. All right, Charlton, I understand you're into employment and also you've started your own uh, retail business. So what took, well, take us through your work experience and at what particular time did you decide to, to venture into the retail business of Smarties I, I wear? Um, okay, I've always wanted to start my own business. Um, I have uh, several interests which I'm pursuing, one of them being in the IK industry because it's an industry that at least I have an understanding of. Um, so we can remember last year the, there was a very change in the structure of our lives, you know, when, when COVID-19 struck. And um, as I was, you know, just thinking through what kind of opportunity exists, you know, even in this, in, in this uh, situation, and I thought to myself, why can I start with what I know, with the ICA industry? And uh, as we know, with COVID-19, people uh, went so much into remote working. You know, uh, companies had their employees working from home. Uh, government uh, was encouraging people to to minimize going to the offices. So that means that working had to come back from home. And uh, as people working from home, you are using your computer. And uh, using a computer is a demanding task to the eyes. And uh, as a way just to, to prevent the eyes from deteriorating and, and being affected by the light that the computer has, because it, use, um, it uses um, um, high LED technology, which cumulatively has effects on the eyes. So this is what I, I thought of and, and I, I, I said, why can't I begin a business where I can sell non-prescription uh, spectacle one that doesn't need you to go to the doctor it's just something like it's just like sunglass but now what is that is meant for uh, computer oh, I like the fact that sh you saw the gap because uh, most of us also the young young guys are very addicted to our phones yeah, so I yeah. believe also that affects our eyes yeah it, it does yeah it does yeah you'll, t you'll tell us a couple of ways to actually manage that yeah, but well. just getting back to it so was there a business plan when you embark on this journey yeah, I, I, I had to, uh, it was not a very comprehensive business plan, mm -hmm. but I, I, I jotted something down, like what did I want to achieve with this? How much, um, the, the amount of money I'll need to put in, uh, where I will get the merchandise, and uh, where I will get my customers, you know? So, so those are some of the things that I, I just, uh, I, I jotted down to just help me with the pipeline of implementing mm -hmm. the business. Yeah, and, and since I, I, I majorly wanted to do it online because I'm, I'm passionate about digital marketing also, I, I say that that is the first place that I will start. Okay. Yeah. How important was it, like the fact that you had structure, uh, even though you said it was not in detail, mm. just ensuring that you stay, uh, you know, on, on the right lane mm. of implement implementation. Mm. Yeah, like you're right to, uh, rightfully put, um, having that kind of a structure ha helped me to, to stay on course. Okay. Um, of course, uh, at the beginning, it, it, it doesn't sound very easy, and still it's not. We still have to, you know, to, 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 to have a lot of grit to push it on. But having that structure 
help us help uh, help us to give some direction to what we wanted to achieve and how we are going to achieve it so that we were not just groping in the dark mm -hmm. at least we, we we had something that is that was guiding us mm -hmm. towards what we wanted to achieve. Okay, nice. Many of us out here have business ideas, I'm telling you. But one of the key things that uh, they say just like holds them back is the issue of finances. So how did you raise your capital? Um, yeah, that it's, it's usually a very dicey issue because everything boils down to finance. I mean, the youth of our nation uh, have a lot of business ideas that lay unimplemented because, you know, there is there is no money so well it took it took planning I, I started thinking about it earlier and so it took um, some savings and also like I've told you we co-manage it with uh, with my wife so we we, were, we brought our finances together a portion of hers and some from 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 my earnings and then yeah we just uh, ordered some merchandise on a small scale okay yes you uh, don't want to go big on <laughs> yeah don't want to go uh highly yeah. you know expectations go exactly. all in yeah <laughs> <laughs> just started kido and then uh, you know we, we grow oh we what grow. so where do you get your merchandise from um so I, I i get them either locally or 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 from china mm -hmm. yes um, but the first batch i got from china uh and then uh yeah than the others locally. Although that one from China had challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it got us thinking um, about just doing it locally because it took a very long time. And then at, at, um, at the customs office, it was also another protracted period to just acquire them. So yeah, it was a challenge, especially with, with the importing. But yeah, those are the two places to get our merchandise one. Okay, so what is your value proposition into the market? Because I'm so sure people think uh, we can get glasses anywhere, right? I can get a glass. People sell, you know, eyewear everywhere. So what is, how different is it when they come to you? Okay, um, at Smarties, I, we, we believe that um, we want to live by the spirit of our name. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that our is not just some, um, some brand names tapped on the frame, okay. but it is about expression of your personality. Yeah, so we, 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 we want to uh, give somebody a frame that also expresses their fashion, also uh, makes them to express their personality. So that is what we want to do. And also we want to, 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 to do that at affordable prices okay. you know uh, because most people when they hear of glasses they imagine huge budgets and so they they like go oh, wow this is just not meant for me but we we want to be able to to give people an opportunity to to take care of their eyes while at the same time not breaking the banks for it ah yeah. very 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 actually fair mm. and reasonable <coughs> So let's look at, at during the early stages of a business are uh, you guys a brand for over a year now yeah close to a year okay mm. so during the early stage let's say three months six months mm. so how how was it how was it like like typical typically on, on an average uh scene because mm. uh, when people starting off their business that they're, they're thinking like i need probably it depends on what you're, whatever you're doing i mean i need a social media manager i need uh, probably if it includes services i need a receptionist and all other things involved but how was it for you during the early stages of the business let's look on a scale of three months uh six months there okay um okay i love i love the beauty of the process and so um like i i have mentioned we we we, we didn't want to begin on such a huge scale that we will not be able to manage so um at the beginning basically the first three months uh, uh, i was actually me and my wife were actually everything to the business come to customer care to social media manager um, but there's some of these things i had to to learn them uh -huh. through youtube you know just go to youtube learn how uh, people, you know, do social manager managing work and all that. So, so you wear all the hats. I wear, I won all the hats. Okay. And still I do okay. because we still don't have a receptionist or a social media manager. But the the beauty of it is that you learn and and the process, you know, just shapes you to uh, to become, uh, you know, a better entrepreneur. All right. So how yeah. do you promote your business to the community? Um, okay, so like I've said, it's majorly online because okay. um, that is where businesses is going. I mean, um, if there is one thing that 
COVID-19 has taught us is mm. that we have to change the way we do business. Yeah, sure. And uh, and so any other uh, way of marketing? Um, so we we we, we do uh, online and also offline, word of mouth, okay. and majorly through status and also Facebook and Instagram. Mm. Especially yeah. this status group, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things happen right there. So, uh, who are your target markets? And uh, yeah, let's start from there. Let's look at your target market. Okay. Um, well, we, we target school going children and also people working, the working uh, group. These people are very active, you know, uh, making sure that the, 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 the engine of our economies run well. So, those are the people we, 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 we target, corporate people. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, knowing the fact that you guys are based online, uh, is it quite? I believe it's not that uh, on high expenses when it comes to maintaining your business. But maybe maybe the other things that I'm not actually looking at. Maybe you can take us through that. Um, well, yeah. There, there are there are certain expenses. Like if you have to promote it on Facebook, you'll have to pay Facebook for oh, them sure. to do the ad. Sponsorship. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sponsorship. Um, um, you know, th th you'll also have to give certain incentives to, to clients, you know, uh, things that are not, uh, they do not directly pay for, but mm -hmm. it's just something to, to make you stand out. Okay. And um, yeah, we also do a lot of, we do branding also. So yeah, it's, it's one of the projects that we're having moving forward. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is still like a, this is a very it's a it's a small business, mm. and let's look at the fact that how you manage your budget and the priorities just to ensure that you, the business still keeps afloat even during this time of COVID nineteen. Okay, yeah, of course during this time of COVID nineteen the 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 the, 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 the profit is a lot less, but uh, we 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 ensure that. Um, whatever little money we, we get, we at least retain some mm -hmm. in order to, to run the business because you can't eat everything. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we, we ensure that um, at least from every sale there is some mm -hmm. bit of money that we keep. Yes. This is, this is for the business. Mm -hmm. Yes. A couple of mistakes that you've done uh, in this particular business during the early stages. Um, okay. So during the early stages, uh, after I had set up the, the Facebook uh, page, I took really quite a while to order the merchandise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, really, it, it, it really hit me that, wow, I, I was almost leaving the business. Yeah, it took like close to, to one month before we finally decided to order the merchandise. Uh, because I, I, I took a lot of time to research and all that. Yeah, so I didn't swing in super fast so that I could order the merchandise. Um, also, um, I miss sometimes on consistency because mm -hmm. uh, social media requires such a, I realize that it requires a lot of consistency, especially with the posting and all that. So that is something that we are still working on. Right. Yeah. A couple of financial lessons that you have learned along the way. Um, I have learned the value of budgeting mm -hmm. and um, Fortunately, uh, the, the person whom we run with the business with my wife is, she's good at budgeting. So at least, nice, nice. yeah. She, Keeps she, you grounded. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, we have been able to, 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 to you know, to, to, to keep to a budget, mm -hmm. you know. You, you don't want to, to see the money coming and then you get excited. And um, so, so that, that, that kind of, of life that we have been able to develop as a result of that. Also, um, the, 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 the resilience, you know, because it's not going to be easy always. Sometimes you, you will go into your pocket to, to get the business running, but uh, it, you definitely know that it's worth it towards the end. Mm. Yeah. So how do you build or rather create, uh, ensure that you uh, are credible? to your potential clientele, especially if you're on the online platform. Because in this online space, we meet all kind of credible people. We have people who are, uh, they claim to be what they are not, con people. So how do you build credibility uh, with your potential clientele? Um, okay, first of all, uh, people need to trust you. Uh, so you have to, to bring out that trust. You, you ensure that you keep your word to them. And um, then after that, we, we and since our we, every client that we get, we ensure that at least we call them some few days after 
to to just you know ask them how they are doing oh the feedback the feedback mm -hmm. so that we can be able to maintain that personal touch mm -hmm. so i think that that increases um, our credibility all right so apart from uh, uh let's look at the we've looked at what it takes to just get into the eye uh the eyewear industry mm -hmm. but let's look at the mindset what kind, of, what kind of mindset does one need to have just to break the barriers of self-doubt or even the naysayers in regard it doesn't have to be in this industry it could be in any other industry mm. so what sort of mindset does one need to just break the boundaries okay um so business is is not easy mm -hmm. and um if you're somebody who had started something you the, the urge to always give up is is um is always there but um, I believe if you have a very strong why, you know, the reason why you are doing the business, then you can be able to transcend all barriers. Because when you remember that why, and it is a strong why for you, then you can be able to, 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 to overcome the challenges of self-doubt and naysayers. And um, you, you, you definitely also want to ensure that you believe in yourself. Uh, because they always say that you know if nobody else believes in you then at least you believe in yourself mm -hmm. so so believing in yourself will, will will help to ensure that you 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 are in need for the long run you're not going to give up whether it's become hard or whether you you you, you sort of you know you're going to do it All right. yes let's look at a couple of setbacks that you're facing in this kind of business um well um COVID-19 is an opportunity for the business because it's, it's mainly um, uh, done online, um, but also it comes with its set of challenges because you have to, to reach to the client, especially you have to do deliveries and all that, yeah, which in Nairobi is, is nowadays a very difficult thing. Mm -hmm. And um, also Facebook budgeting can frustrate you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that can eat into your money a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you if you don't take care of it, you know, you can you just burn your money and probably don't have a, a lead or a client. And how do you manage that? Uh, okay, well, you start with a small budget. Mm -hmm. Yes, you just start with a small budget and then and then you scale. Yeah. At the beginning, I, I have ever run Facebook as before and uh, it can, <laughs> if, you bl if you put a lot of budget, you mm -hmm. know, Facebook will definitely just eat it. Mm. and then probably won't get your quality leads. So oh, wow. you start on a small budget and then you scale up. So that you can find value for your money. For your money, exactly. All right, so let's look at, uh, I don't want to give a specific time frame, but what mm. does the future look like for uh, Smarties Eyewear? Um, okay, um, there are certain things that we are, we, are, we are looking at, especially the technology that surrounds uh, eyewear. Mm -hmm. um, there is uh, a technology that is called uh, a virtual try-on, mm -hmm. uh, where it's, 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 uh, it's installed into a website where you can just go and uh, use your picture to try on frames virtually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a technology that is upcoming, that is being embraced by the IK industry, and that is what we want to be, because the convenience that it gives to the client is huge. All right. Yeah. So Charlton, we were talking about business all this, so we were looking at the angle of business. Mm. Now it's time to change hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's change hats mm. to you being uh, an, op an opt optim optometrist. Yes. Hi, this is a tongue twister, my people. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a question, a couple, couple of questions for you. So uh, we posted on our social media handles, and this is what I have. So uh, one question comes in, like, how often should I get my eyes checked? Um, okay, so basically we recommend that you have your eyes checked um, every two years. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you age, that frequency increases. You're supposed to do it um, after one year as you age, basically from 40 years going onwards. And also, if you have um, morbidity, like if you have diabetes and all those other conditions, then it should be as uh, as frequent as six months, every six months, like okay. two times in a year. Okay. Yeah. So if one comes to your office, what should they expect? Take us through briefly the process. Okay. So when you consultation, yeah. Okay. So when you come in 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 our practice, that is at at Nephromed, we will uh, basically take you through. Uh, those registration process and all that 
after which we will uh, ask you you know several questions just to know what exactly your problem is okay. um, some of us just come for either check up to know whether they are either okay uh -huh. which is good All right. yeah because you you can never say that your eyes okay just because you you read there's like a chart that we usually take people through to read mm -hmm. so reading that chart is not a qualification to do so mm -hmm. after you've read that chart then we, we will do our examination using the equipments that are there to to determine the the health status of oh. your eyes so after which we will advise you on the best management forward all right i've been to a checkup and it's really very uncomfortable especially the eye pressure when you're checking the eye pressure it can be really uncomfortable yeah yeah <laughs> i know but they are actually developing uh, equipment where it, there is this minimum contact with the eyes ah, okay. that can still take the pressure all right so let's yeah. look at the three most common eye problems um in our side of the country uh, the three most common uh, symptoms are um, first of all allergies mm -hmm. so a lot of people suffer from allergies uh, and and this is usually seasonal especially when it is sunny and then there's a lot of dust um, the other issue is uh, complaints about um, light sensitivity um, so we our eyes nowadays is exposed to a lot of eyes a lot of light sorry from the computer and all that plus almost virtually every work that we do is is on a computer so that is one of the major complaints and um the last the 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 other condition that is more prevalent in our side of the country is um, um the pressure issues mm -hmm. although this is uh, it, it's sometimes um hereditary because mm -hmm. of the genes that you have uh, it can it, it it's, it's something that i have seen most people have the other one is um, short sightedness mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. All right, so let's look at uh, three ways to protect our eyes. Uh, I mentioned uh, issues with light. Yeah. Um, okay, so I usually tell my patients that there are two, there are two ways to, 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 to solve the issue of light. Either one is to prevent exposure or to avoid exposure. Yeah, because light is something that we need. We can definitely not avoid it so we prevent exposure so the first thing that to, that we recommend is to use uh, eye glasses okay. to 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 prevent your eyes from the sun um and and these eye glasses need to have 100 percent uv protection and also we recommend that they are polarized all right yes okay um, so as we wind up probably you could tell us where people can find you on social media and if they want some merchandise uh from uh uh, uh smarties eyewear where they can find you Okay, so we are on Facebook at uh, Smarties Eyewear. We are on Facebook at Smarties Eyewear. And also, if you want an eye checkup, we are at uh, Upper Hill uh, on Fotungong Avenue. That is Nefromed. You can find us there. We'll do for you a very comprehensive eye checkup. And also, we have an educational channel. It's called uh, Favorite Optometries on Facebook. So we give, uh, you know, cutting edge information of eye, on eye care there so that people can be empowered to take... Uh, proactive management practices on their health. All right. Thank you yeah. very much, Ch uh, Charlton, for creating time to be with us. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Yeah. So that is Charlton Ogingo, who is an optometrist and the co-founder of Smarties Eyewear. So make sure you follow them across all the social media handles. Keep that conversation going. And if you have any other question, make sure you reach out to him. Make sure you don't shut that down. We'll be right back with so much right here on Why in the Morning. Hashtag to use is hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Right with at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back.